Hello! Welcome to the Polyglot Files. My name is Michael and today we're doing a video for a series that I've ignored for quite a while. Welcome to the latest episode of Languages of the World! I recently asked for suggestions for video topics and today's country, Mexico, was requested many times by viewers like you. If you have a suggestion for a country you'd like me to cover, or another topic related to language learning or linguistics, leave me a comment below. I'm always open for video suggestions. Not to mention, I've been at this channel for almost four years, and I'm kind of losing the ability to create new topics on my own. Before we got started on today's episode though, I did want to mention that this video has been sponsored by italki. Italki is one of the fastest and most effective ways to learn a language because it puts you in contact with native speakers of that language. Human teachers are one of the best ways to learn a language, period. You can take lessons with an italki teacher or tutor that is catered towards your learning style and your language learning goals. Best of all, these lessons are exclusively online. You can schedule a lesson for any time and take it anywhere so long as you have an internet connection. Lessons are affordable, often at a fraction of the cost of offline tutors, schools, and computer software. And I personally have used italki to help me learn my languages. I have used italki to practice my Italian, French, German, and Afrikaans, and I love it. Follow the link in the description and get 10 US dollars in italki credits with the purchase of your first lesson. When I first considered Mexico as a potential topic for the Languages of the World series, I thought it was going to be a simple, straightforward episode. In my mind, they speak Spanish in Mexico, and sure, the Spanish in Mexico is different than the Spanish spoken in Spain or in other parts of the Americas, but I'd already done a couple videos on Spanish, and I really wasn't all that interested. And then I did a bit of research. Turns out, Spanish is just one of the 68 national languages that the Mexican government recognizes. Wait, what? Before we delve into the 67 other languages though, let's take a brief look at Spanish. And I'm talking real brief. Spanish is spoken natively by 103 million out of 112 million people in Mexico, and it is estimated that the other 9 million Mexicans can communicate in Spanish on some level. The Spanish spoken in Mexico differs from European Spanish mostly in pronunciation and in vocabulary. For example, in European Spanish, the letters C and Z are pronounced like th, as in the English word think, whereas in Mexican Spanish, they are pronounced as an S. This gives us distinctions such as gracias in Mexican Spanish and gracias in European Spanish. Further, these differences can be seen in vocabulary. For example, a computer in Spain is an ordenador, but a computadora in Mexico. A pen is a bolígrafo in Spain, but a pluma in Mexico. Lastly, a potato is a patata in Spain, but a papa in Mexico. My papa is a potato. Bad joke. Okay. Spanish was brought to Mexico in the 1500s by Hernán Cortés during his conquests of Central America. After defeating the Aztec Empire and introducing the survivors to smallpox, New Spain's indigenous population shrank from 10 million people to 1.5 million people by the beginning of the 1600s. As such, it is estimated that only about 6% of Mexico's population speaks an indigenous language natively today. Despite this, Ethnologue estimates that there may be as many as 282 indigenous languages that are still spoken in Mexico. The most widely spoken of these indigenous languages is called Nahuatl. Nahuatl is spoken by about 1.7 million people, mostly in central Mexico. While speakers of this language often refer to themselves as the Nahua people, they were historically known by another name, the Aztecs. As such, the Nahuatl language is the surviving form of the language spoken in the Aztec Empire before Spanish colonization. Some linguists claim that Nahuatl is a non-configurational language, meaning that it has a relatively free word order. Further, Nahuatl is an agglutinative... I can never say this word. Agglutinative. 
Further, Nahuatl is an agglutinative language, meaning it uses a complex system of roots, prefixes, and suffixes to express full thoughts. For example, the following means, I want to feed them. As we can see, this sentence is actually composed of a single word with two verbal roots, eat and want, as well as affixes to modify its meaning. Modern dialects of Nahuatl have adopted sounds that were not native to the language, such as b, d, g, and f, that are from the Spanish language. Interestingly, English has adopted a number of Nahuatl words that were used at the time of Spanish colonization to talk about goods that were found in Mexico. These words include avocado, tomato, and chocolate. Where would we be without chocolate? Nowhere. That's where. Further, if you're interested in listening to a sample of Nahuatl spoken by a native speaker, check out the link in the description. Languages related to Nahuatl include other Mexican indigenous languages that are part of the Uto Aztecan language family. These include Tarahamara, spoken by 85,000 people, Huichol, spoken by 45,000 people, and endangered languages such as Papago, spoken natively by only 153 people. Another language that was spoken by a powerful ancient civilization before European colonization is called Yucatec Mayan. Yucatec Mayan is spoken by around 800,000 people, mostly in the Yucatan Peninsula and in neighboring Belize. While Yucatec Mayan is not at all related to Nahuatl, it was spoken in the Mayan civilization whose earliest permanent settlements can be traced back to 2600 BCE. Yucatec Mayan is a verb initial language, meaning it can have a verb object subject word order or a verb subject object word order. Yucatec Mayan also employs something called creaky voice. Creaky voice, or vocal fry, is actually a linguistic feature that is used by some prominent female celebrities in Hollywood, and it is characterized by the cartilages in the larynx compressing together, creating a vibrating sound when you speak. For example, it gives this effect. Oh my god, Becky, I love your dress. It looks so good. Rather than being a stylistic choice used by celebrities, however, vocal fry in Yucatec Mayan can actually be a distinguishing feature between different vowel sounds. So good. While I can't talk about every single indigenous language that is spoken in Mexico, I did want to focus on one in particular the Kilauea language. Kilauea is the most endangered language in Mexico with only four documented speakers as of 2018. Kilauea is spoken in Baja, California, and it has a subject-object-verb word order, as well as three pitch accents. Without significant conservation efforts to teach new generations the language, Kilauea could disappear completely by the end of our lifetime. As I previously mentioned, it is nearly impossible for me to talk about every single indigenous language in Mexico. But if you have knowledge of a language that I've missed, leave me a comment below. I'd love to learn more about these fascinating languages. Mexico is also home to three sign languages. Mexican Sign Language, Yucatan Sign Language, and American Sign Language that is primarily used in the United States. Mexico also has a number of immigrant languages, including Arabic, French, and Polish. Interestingly, Plattdeutsch is spoken by Mexican Mennonites, and Romani is also spoken in Mexico by the nomadic Roma peoples. You can learn more about the Romani language by checking out my video here. This has been another episode of Languages of the World! If you have any suggestions for future Languages of the World episodes, leave them in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe. I also have social media profiles because I'm super hip and with it. You can check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I post sometimes. This is awkward. As usual, thank you for watching the Polyglot Files, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!